Hello Chess Chicos and Chess Chicas, book review time and um, this time it's going to be a very personal one. Um, let's see why. I have been uh, wanting to review a couple of books and um, the one that we are going to discuss today is one that um, I have been overlooking so to speak for a very long time and the reason for that is this because for the past six, seven, eight months these books one, two, and three. Can I do a cool trick like magicians, like spread the cards? So yeah, these books have been my Bibles. Literally, I woke up with them, work with them. They, yeah, they, yeah, they followed me 24-7 um, pretty much every day. And the reason for that is, is because I have been blessed with an opportunity to work with uh, Judith Polga, on a series of chessable courses and um, although these chessable courses I would say cover about 20-30% of uh, what's in these books and no more than that um, we really had to rely on uh, a lot of things that are written in this book in terms of what games to pick, what games not to pick. Uh, I needed to have a very good look in the, at the analysis of uh, certain games in the book and occasionally try to add to it and whatnot. So um, yeah, these books have really defined uh, my uh, the vast majority of my content creating work, at least for Chessable, for the past more than half a year. And so it became such a such a, a working tool, so to speak, that somehow I forgot that in the end of the day, these are three absolutely magnificent, awesome chess books. And actually, a couple of uh, a month ago, when I started regularly reviewing books, I started receiving questions from viewers about what books would I recommend that are game collections from certain players. And amazingly, this one entirely avoided my attention, once again, probably because I never looked upon it, at least for the past X amount of month, as a book, but more of a something that was my working tool. So, hello, that is definitely a top five choice um, if I were to recommend you um, a book, or rather, all the three of them, um, as a game collection. Now. What really stands out about these books, first of all, is, is the fact that it's plural. It's books. If you would like to see a good book written about a life work of a great chess player and it's squeezed into one book, it's either a mighty thick book or it's a bad one. And so you really need quantity, volume, a ton of pages in order to get quality out of these books and quality is a great pun here because quality chess the publisher of this book uh, or other books really went uh, out of their way and allowed the author uh, Judith to do what she really wanted to do and uh, both the structure of the books and more on that in a second and the amount of stuff that is in there uh, really showcases the dedication both from the author and the publisher to make it an absolute standout book. So, um, the books are structured in a unique way that in my opinion makes this one of the best books out there when it comes to um, a collection of games of a certain player. And that is the following. Although the three books, uh, numbered one, two, three, <clears throat> follow chronological order, first, second, third, the first part of the, uh, Judith's career, middle, end. Inside the books, the chronology is broken. And it's such a brilliant thing that it is because almost all of these books that you find on players go from beginning to end and go through history. And it's not a bad thing, but after a while it becomes a little bit predictable and to some degree a bit too mechanic mechanic and um, what uh, Judith has done in this book was was that inside the books although it basically the book covers uh, games the first one from beginning all the way to 1990 or 91 but inside you will find a mixture of games 
ranging in that time period to fit certain uh, chapters. And the chapters are not chronological. They are actually thematically selected. So the first chapter, for example, is called Tricks. And it's just a bunch of games where Judith showcases her incredible uh, tactical uh, prowess already in a very early age of uh, her, or a very uh, early stage, rather, of her career. Then it moves on to Trapping the Queen, and she shows games from this, um, once again, this 14 years of uh, chess playing when she managed to trap the opponent's queen. Peace domination, uh, in-game technique, uh, attacking without queens, memorable games, decisive games, and she then lists games that she needed to win uh, to win a tournament or to achieve a title, you name it. Um, and so that's a really cool thing in my opinion because um, then you sort of are exposed from various quality of games because of the time difference between them. But still there is a coherent, uh, greater structure that holds them together. Now let me show you the other reason why I consider this book to be great. And a lot of uh, chess books actually fall short in this department um, that are about a player and their life. If you look here, you can see that the chapter begins with a lot of text. There is awesome stories to be read, really interesting tidbits about training, lifestyle, what it meant to be a girl growing up in a former communist country, um, what it meant to be a, a female player in a very men-dominated environment, the whole shebang, the travels, uh, the amazing experiences. And the other thing is, is that the book is full of pictures that make it also more personal and somehow more relatable for us to see how uh, Judith has become from a uh, little girl to one of the most powerful and most remarkable chess personalities of all time. Wherever I open up stories, pictures, games. And to also uh, highlight another very important fact, you can also see that the game analysis is extremely thorough, plenty of diagrams, plenty of lines, and plenty of explanations. So you have the lot. This is my um, hobby horse or pet peeves all the time when people ask me about chess books. The greatest quality of a chess book is analyzed game, detailed analysis, detailed explanation. And these books provide it all. So this is a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 book that I really highly recommend you. And now I'm going to show you two examples from these books that I really, really liked. This one, Judith. Uh, not quite 14 years old, playing for the World Championship title in the under-14 boys section uh, in the United States. His opponent is uh, the Polish Grandmaster, later becoming Grandmaster Kaminski. And here she pull, pulls one of her trademark tricks. She plays uh, f6, uh, trying to tighten the noose around uh, the king's neck. Uh, pawn takes c3. Assuming recapture, you don't do that ever against Judith. Don't assume anything other than the fact that uh, tricks are bound. Knight f5, um, highlighting the fact that this knight has got a fair few jobs, including defending the back rank mate. Of course, Kaminski had seen it, and he went like, make sure it's, you don't confuse it with Kamski, it's Kaminski. Um, he took on b2, thinking that, all oh, good, bro, I'm getting a queen, and uh, no worries, but look at this. You'd never ever wanted to enter a tactical battle about who saw further with Judith even at her early age or early stage of her career. Uh, because look what happens. Takes this six, gets a queen, and she takes the rook, and there is an oopsie daisy because the queen is hanging, and so is the back rank mate. See ya, wouldn't wanna be ya. And uh, thus, Judith uh, has become the under 14 boys world champion. Uh, in that year. A really awesome tidbit. By the way, also the book, at least two of them, I think, out of the three, um, feature multiple chapters that are just solving, where she shows you little tactics, little puzzles that occurred in her career. A very nice touch there, too. And here is a game from a lot later that I really, really enjoyed going through this time. I think it's... Yeah, it's another Polish 
Gdanski Jacek. Um, or Jacek Danski rather is the opponent uh, and he plays his favorite French now Judith has had a reputation for absolutely demolishing the French I remember going through many of her games destroying absolute powerhouses of uh, this uh, defense including Ullmann, Nak, um, Panno, uh, Danski the list goes on beautiful examples across the three volumes about how to dismantle the French and this is going to be no exception um, Dansky he castled into this attack more typical would be uh, Queen a5 knight f5 ideas keeping the Queen side castling option open this is a little bit asking for it and uh, indeed Judith does not need to be asked twice to launch a king side attack vacating um, the h5 for the pawn and up we go baby h4 h5 beautiful attack the idea is um, twofold once play one is to play h6 and then penetrate on the weak dark squares but there is another idea here that I quite liked um, after bishop e8 which was knight h4 and if knight takes knight g6 check and um, that's all she wrote because after take take h6 bishop takes h6 leads to a forced checkmate arena um obviously pawn takes pawn takes is even worse because then we have the stock standard check check checkmate and so Dansky decided to just throw caution to the wind take on a4 hope for the best in the shape of a counter play against the c3 pawn but judith went like nah give me that horsey and now give me the checkmate and this attack is just entirely irresistible by the way the game is presented with very thorough and detailed analysis but i'm now just uh showing you the best parts of the game such as this check after king g8 queen takes g6 brings on a fabulous mating idea pawn up king out and promote to queen and only when the rook takes the queen do we go for the check forcing the king to go back to the back rank, disconnecting the rocks and allowing a fabulous um, checkmate on h8. Obviously, Dansky couldn't allow this, so he decided to sack. But now the queen is going to penetrate on either of these squares with elementary power. Queen c7, knight b4 was played. These are just some spite tactics. Queen b4, king e3, and the real cutie actually, g5 was played. Hoping to sell this checkmate, which would have been uh, quite something, but uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck with scoring those against Judith. He, she instead went knight takes g5, and uh, Dansky threw in the towel, piece down, getting mated. Uh, it's all over Red Rover. So, once again, uh, Judith Polgar's uh, fabulous book trilogy, um, which I already chucked away, but I will now bring back uh, one of them out of the three. Uh, is an absolutely marvelous read, really great source of entertainment as well as learning. Um, very, very highly recommended. And um, yeah, please be sure that you check out this book as well as the course perhaps that Judith and I have uh, uh, created, um, especially because as I said, the two don't really overlap as much as people thought. And I already have a uh, another book um, that um, I really am keen on reviewing uh, on this channel. So look out for uh, this one as my next book review. For now, however, our focus is on the Judith Polgar book trilogy, which is definitely one of my all-time favorite uh, books when it comes to a book of uh, uh, a book written on a chess player and their lifetime. Um, a tremendous read and a really entertaining book. So do yourself a favor and um, get that book. You will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching. I will be back with more soon. Bye.